Hey there, welcome back 3D printing enthusiasts. I've been talking about turning plastic bottles like this or this into usable 3D printing filament like this or like this. In my last video, I was showing everyone my method for using a little air pressure and a heat gun to smooth out some of the plastic bottles that have a lot of texturing in them. In this video, I'm going to be cutting off the bottoms of those bottles, preparing them and we're gonna be talking about how I go about coloring the filament. And there's a little caveat with this. These are the methods that I use. It's not to say it's the only way to do it. I'm sure there's other ways. And using the things that I use, I can make filament that looks like this. This is a nice red color. And we can print things like this multicolor vase mode vase, or even something as nice as this, which is a crystal dragon by Cinderwing. Just look at all the colors in there. Isn't he beautiful? And here in the United States, it seems that most of our plastic bottles are either clear or perhaps green. Green you might be familiar with, Mountain Dew, Sprite, 7-Up is an example. But I do know in other countries that they have other colored bottles, for instance, blue or red. So what we're gonna have to do here with our clear bottles, if we want them to be different colors, is use a couple of methods to, to give them some color. Check this out. Here are some bottles that I smoothed out yesterday. And before we can color these, we need to cut the bottoms off. Then using the scissors, we can follow a straight line. use the same process for the larger bottle. And by the way, we can't use the bottom of these bottles. The plastic is not consistent, so this needs to be removed. When coloring this clear plastic, I have two methods for this. The first method is going to be with some permanent markers. The second is going to be with some dye, a product I found on Amazon, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. For now, I think most people will tend to use this marker method. And what I generally tend to do is just to color the inside of the bottle, the inside surface. And the reason I do that is when I cut this into a ribbon and put it on my spool and run it through my pultruder, that colored part of the plastic will become the inside of the filament. That will prevent the inside of my printer, the hot-ended nozzle, from getting too contaminated with uh, leftover dye and such from the permanent marker. When it comes to permanent markers, there is no shortage of brands and colors to use. All of these different colors, a couple different brands here. Greens, blues, reds, oranges, got your yellow, teals. No shortage here, but there are some differences. For instance, these smaller Sharpies, these markers, eh, it's gonna take a little bit longer to color your plastic with these. I pre prefer to use these broad tip ones. I've also noted that most of these colors work really, really well. The blue, the green, the yellow, the purple. But I have noted that this orange and the red tend to fade and change colors when I put them through the pultruder and print with them. And I'll show you that. Now, here's a little batch of samples that I made up with a number of permanent markers. Kind of gives me an idea of what color they'll come out to be. And you'll note here, for instance, this is the red. And after it pultrudes, it prints, it comes out kind of a strange burnt orange color. And then the orange back here, for example, comes out almost a root beer color. Now that's not a bad thing, but the thing is, it's just not orange. I should also note that black permanent markers can be used. And when you print with this as the coloration, it comes out almost looking like onyx. 
Black's a good color to use too. And of course, black goes with everything, right? Another thing to consider when coloring these bottles with markers is the size of the bottle. This large one, for example, I can easily fit my hand up in there and begin coloring the inside of the bottle. However, with this smaller one, that's just not gonna work very well. So in the case of these smaller bottles, it's sometimes better to put them through your ribbon cutter and then um, using a work surface, stretch it out and color one side or both sides of uh, the strip once you've cut it. Another thing that you can do while coloring is making gradients. For instance, this particular vase here has got a gradient. And the way to do that is by starting with one color, working yourself down part of the bottle, switching to the next part and continuing, changing colors as you go. When coloring your bottle, you can also adjust how rich the color is or the opacity by how dense you put this on. For instance, we'll use this black marker so that it's easy to see. It's not necessary to cover every little surface inside. You can just make small swirls and work your way around. And I may be covering about half of the plastic. Here's a bottle I've completed with the black. And if you see there, it's just a series of swirls. And it's important to note that um, after I cut this into a ribbon and put it through the poltruder and print with it, that black color will mix. You won't see these little on and off lines. For example, there's this that I printed with the black. It's sort of a translucent color. It may not appear on camera here, but I think that looks really great. So be creative with your markers and your colors. There's a lot you can do. Solids, you can do transitions, or just leave your, your uh, plastic clear and have things that look like this. The other method that I use for coloring my PET plastic is a dye that I found on Amazon. It's a product called iDye Poly, and I'll show you some pictures of it here. It comes in a lot of colors. And with this, you make up um, a dye using some water, the, the, the dye itself, which looks like mica powder, and then there's a color intensifier. And <clears throat> I use this by putting it in a double boiler. And when the product gets hot, I've taken my strips of, um, from the bottles that have already been cut into a ribbon, wrapped up with like a wire tie, and I dip them in this solution until the solution cools off. I then save that solution, you know, pour it off, rinse off the plastic, and then run it through the poultrier. And that makes a very intense color like this red. This was, I think, what they called crimson. And then there was this wonderful purple. Now this process is a little messier, a little more time consuming. You can't really do color gradients with it, but the color that you get out of these is just phenomenal. It actually absorbs all the way into the plastic. Those are the two methods that I use for coloring my PET plastic. And note that this is all being done before I'm going to be putting the ribbons through my poultry. I will, however, note that there have been others that have tried uh, another process whereby they take clear filament and right before it goes into their extruder, they're touching it with colored markers, which indeed is putting some color into it. But again, my concern has always been about some of this marker color and such contaminating the parts of the hot end. So this is the method I use. Feel free to comment, like, share this video. Um, if you have other ideas, drop those in the comments. And in the next video, we'll be going over um, the methods of cutting these bottles into the ribbons and some of the things that need to be considered there. All right, everyone, enjoy. Thanks.